Well, everybody, we're going to learn a little bit about random numbers and then kind of relate them to loops at the end. And there'll be a loose collection or correlation. But you'll see how to do it even if we don't use a pure loop this time. So let's jump into it. And, and the difference between what we've done so far is that usually we go over the theory and then we go ahead and make a program. Here we're going to go in reverse. We're going to look at a program and what it does and then try to interpret the code based on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run this. And this is a guessing game. And as it says, I'm thinking of a number. And you're supposed to come up with the number. Um, now, this isn't a good one, but I'm pretty sure that it is between uh, 1 and 1,000. So I am going to type in 500. Good guess. Then maybe 250. Guess. 100. So it's 51. Wow, after a long bit of guessing, we get to that. So let's go ahead and just go straight into the guess. Now, what you all see have seen is that there is a natural loop, right? It goes, it, it kept going through over and over and over and over and over again. And that is because the event handler is essentially a loop, if you think about it, right? It constantly listens. It says, did you press this button? Did you press this button? Did you press this button? Did you press Oh, you press this button. Okay, now I can do something. So it's that constant listening actually creates a loop that we, we are used to, but not used to in terms of programming because it's built into the actual event. So let's go ahead and click into guess. Um, and as you'll see, we're not getting a loop inside here. And more importantly, um, can you do this in other programming languages like Java and C++? And you can, but in, unless you sent these, these event handlers up, what you'd have to do is actually create a while loop, right? And say, okay, while um, this answer isn't correct, then do this, which is essentially what are you going to guess? And then so on and so forth. And but, but this whole thing that we're going around in circles with now is really just to get to talk to random numbers. So let's get to that first. And the reason why, let's prove this is random. Last time we, we picked 51 and we made it, right? That was our answer. If I hit 51 and hit guess again, it's going to say whoops too high. Now let's go back into the guess. And as you can see, it's between 1 and 100, not 1 and 1,000. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm thinking of a number between um, 1 and 1,100. And to, to be honest, to go up to the, the design, if you notice, is off a little bit. There is our actual, I left it as a blank box. I'm going to move this over here so that when you do hit start, you can see the whole piece. There you go. Not the most professional, but it does work. Okay, now let's go into the code and start looking what it's going to do. Now, as you, as, as you can see, it's going to say int guess is going to take this in, right? It's going to take string that we enter and put it into an int. But then it's going to try to compare it. And as you can see, what are we comparing it to? Well, we compare it to a random number. Now, a random number is simply fake. That <laughs> There is no such thing as a random number. But we can have something that appears to be a random number. So in other words, if I said pick a number 1 through 5 um, and I wanted to make it random, I could put a bunch of numbers into a fi file, I, you know, starting with 5, 3, 2, 2, 1, 4, 4, 3, 5, 7, no, no 7s, <laughs> but anything between 1 and 5, right? 
Um, and it could seem, and every time we brought up the file, we could go into the next cell or to the next number to pick it out. And it'd be essentially seemingly random. Well, this is roughly what a what a uh, a, um, a random number does in C sharp and pretty much every other language, that it keeps you it, it creates or keeps a stockpile of these numbers, and these numbers go from one to about two trillion. So it's a large number if you stay in terms of the integers. So it's a a large capability, and they're just all in there. What happens if you always access the file in the beginning? Well, that's an issue, right? Because if my first number is always 5 in my 1 to 5 file, it's not going to seem so random. Everyone's going to kind of, after a while, memorize what's the next number. Oh, 1, 5, 3, 3, 4, 1, you know, so on and so forth. So the best way to get around that is to access the file never in the same place. So the first way of accessing a, a file and what we're used to is that, that sequential. And this is similar to the good old-fashioned, if you remember, the cassette tapes, VHS tapes. Um, I can't think of what else. Uh, but you, you start from the beginning and you go through it. Um, that is to be contradicted to the um, direct access which, you know, a CD-ROM or something like that is where you can go in anywhere and pick it apart. So if we use the direct access approach to going into a file and grabbing, oh, let's start with the 952nd number, when the next time we'll come in and we'll do the 1152th number, <laughs> you know, that's going to be, uh, create that random effect again. Now, do you have to do all this stuff? No, C Sharp handles this for you. In fact, you don't even have to tell it where to go into. The and what we'll see in the very first line, so when we're initializing the class itself, we are going to bring up this random rand answer, new random. Basically, what that's saying is go out, get a new random number every time you come into the form. And in fact, even before the form's created or initialized, as you can see down here. So random answer is the random number, and new just means pick a new. Um, we're going to also set up an int answer here because ultimately we want this in the form of an int. Because just as we've started a random number doesn't mean we've actually located the random number. We're just set, this is essentially a declaration. And so we're going to come in, we're going to initialize the form, and then we're going to set the answer equal to something. And this is a little tricky because this is going to find a new random number every time you come into the form, which is what we want. But sometimes you might want to put this or the new random number generated maybe in that form one design when you hit the guess button because what happens if you want to play again, so to speak. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this. We are going to do a rand answer, which is this guy up here, and it's going to say next. So remember when we said go into a file and pull out a random answer or a random number? Um, that's what the next does. It goes in and gets it for you. You don't have to worry about where the placement is. It don't, just it, it, It's all done by C Sharp. And 100 means it's going to go from um, 0 to 99. And because of that, because remember going back to loops, everything in C Sharp likes to start at 0. So to cover that 100, it, to, it goes 0 to 99, counting by ones, which is also why we add the plus one here at the end. Now, what happens if we don't put that 100 in there? Well, you get that. It'll pick anywhere from 2 trillion, <laughs> 1 to 2 trillion, or 0 to 2 trillion in for you. So always try to remember to put that in. There's also a double form of this, meaning that instead of an int, you do a double, which works really well. And if you put nothing in there, it'll just pick somewhere between 0 and 1, which seems like a, a, be a better way of doing it. But I do like the fact that it does have an integer because a lot of programming languages 
um, don't have the integer form of that. You end up having to translate it into an integer. Okay, now that we have the, the random number picked, which we're calling answer, which kind of makes sense because that's what we're trying to guess, then we go back down to button one click, and then we're going to, well, maybe we should go to this. So we got form one and form one load. Form one is going to happen first. Form one load is going to happen right after. That works fine. But now let's go down to um, the button one click, which we really should have renamed guess or something like that. But as you can see in the bottom right, there's button one. That, um, in fact, because you see this underscore one here, I must have written another um, method for it some other time. Anyways, now we have to match something with that answer. So we're taking that guess, like we said before, and we're uh, taking from the text box and turning it into an integer. So I wouldn't suggest it. In fact, let's go. It's bothering me so much that now I'm going to turn. I'm going ahead and type that in. Else, and we're going to put this because why? Why create that type of lag? Again, this is a real quick program so it doesn't necessarily need it but let, why not practice it now instead of doing it later okay now we're going to say if guess is less than answer your answer is too low so in other words the guess is lower than the number the random number that we turned into answer right and the else if which you're you should be familiar with now as well if it's greater than we're going to say too high now the next one is the error catch because what happens if somebody puts in 101 um, or negative 5, <laughs> right? Then all of a sudden, the answer or the feedback they get might not really help them. So we want to give them a special answer in that case. We don't actually check for somebody if somebody puts in a text. We probably could do that type of um, runtime error and check for do a try catch as well but let's let's not worry about that in this case and then lastly if the answer equals the guess equals the answer we're going to say nice work um, these if you don't know what they are just um, this means or so only one of these has to be true Because remember, if it's an and, it'd have to be greater than 100, and it'd have to be lower than 1 in order to make it work. And then, of course, we have the else. So let's go ahead and give this a run. One more time. Let's go ahead and try to create the air. And notice what happens here, right? It says, guess, sorry, your answer is too low, which is correct, right? So what is the mistake that I made? Um, well, the answer is that it goes between between these two first and then in this case guess is less than the answer so it's going to say your answer is too low and that's going to skip over all these else if so really if you want to do true error check in here you you're going to want to take this and move it up so let's go ahead and do that so this we're going to put here and this, we're going to move down. And spacing isn't that big of a deal. Compilers, nine times out of ten, take out, or maybe 100 times out of 100, take out the spacing. So uh, don't worry about that. Just make sure you're not running words into each other because it, it can undo the, the keywords. Um, but anyways, where were we? Guess is that we like that. We like that. We have to switch out the output logos, too. Now, if we run it one more time, let's do a negative one. And then hit guess. Now it gives us that good answer. And that we can go ahead and keep that 
um, working correctly because as soon as we put in 50, it'll tell us whether we're low or too high. Too low? Well, how about 101? Okay, there you go. Now everything works and works correctly.